Hey guys, happy Monday. Today we are going to work on grammar. A lot of this, all of this pretty much is review, but I know that grammar is one of those things that we just kind of forget every year and that it's always a good refresher to help us with our writing. So I'm going to share my PowerPoint with you. And today we're going to talk about um, some of the parts of speech. So, um, Let's start with noun. A noun is a person, place, or thing. So we have common nouns and proper nouns. Common nouns are your regular people, places, things like kitchen, refrigerator, dog, couch, rug, tree, just whatever. Any people, place, or thing. A proper noun is a specific name. Miss Moore, Marion Elementary School, um, Marion North Carolina. All of those are proper nouns. They have a specific name and you make sure that they are capital when you write them. The first letter should be capital. Also with nouns, when we make them plural, you want to make sure that you're um, spelling them the correct way. So um, most of the time, your general rule is to, be to, is to add S. So if you have the noun book to make it plural, meaning more than one, you just add an S. Books. Car, you add an S. Cars. Teacher, teachers, add your S. If a noun ends in S, X, Z, C, H, or S, H, you have to add an E, S, like bus. You would add E, S, buses, box, boxes. If you have a consonant plus a Y at the end, you change the Y to I, E, S. So like city would be cities, I-E-S. Party, parties, I-E-S. You can't just add an S to the end if there's a Y. If there's a consonant and an O on the end, and those are a little more rare, you add E-S. Hero, echo, you add E-S to those. Okay? And if the noun ends in F, um, which normally be F-E, Change the F to a V and add ES. So like wife would turn into wives. Knife would turn into knives. And then of course you have your irregular nouns that don't really follow any of those rules. Like man, woman, child, tooth. You would change man into men. Woman into woman. Child is turned into children. Tooth is turned into teeth. And then you also have some nouns that just stay the same. Aircraft, sheep, deer. Those are going to stay the same. I saw a deer in the backyard. I saw many deer in the backyard. Okay. Abstract nouns are nouns that are not physical. You cannot physically touch them. So um, like refrigerator, I can physically touch my refrigerator. Well, you also have nouns that are um, feelings, states, emotions, qualities, concepts, and moments. Those things are not things you can touch, but they're still nouns. So, for example, fear. You can't touch fear, but it's still a noun. Um, anger, misery, honesty, comfort, birthdays. All of those things are nouns. They're things. They're just not physical things that you can touch. So they're abstract nouns. Then we have pronouns. Pronouns take the place of a noun. So a pronoun um, uses this like instead of saying Miss Moore, you would say she. Or if I was the one writing or speaking, I would say I. So um, writers use pronouns to keep from using the same noun over and over again. So instead of saying Miss Moore, Miss Moore, Miss Moore, you would say, Miss Moore, blah, 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 she, blah, blah, blah. And then it gives your writing some, um, a little bit of variety. An antecedent is the noun that is referred to by the noun. So when the hole has water in it, you can sometimes see a tree frog there. The antecedent is the hole. The pronoun would be it. So you always want to make sure that those agree. You wouldn't want to say, when the hole has water in her, 
you can sometimes see a tree frog there. That wouldn't make any sense because a hole is a thing. It's an it. It's not a person. You wouldn't say her or he or she or whatever. After the grubs become beetles, they eat their way out of the chambers. So your antecedents would be the grubs and beetles, the pronouns they, their. And since you're, you've got um, multiple beetles, you would say they instead of it. The young boy watched the bluebird until he saw the babies. A boy is a he. So you would want to make sure that those agree. Okay. Next we have verbs. Verbs are action words. Um, run, jump, fly. Anything you can physically do. You, um, those are your verbs, okay? So we have a couple of different types of verb tenses. And these um, are a little confusing, but you guys know this stuff by now. You just might not remember the, the words for them. So um, simple verb tense is we have past, present, and future in all of our verb tenses. Simple in the past, simple past verb tense is completed action or the past state of being. So it's just something that happened in the past. Ken walked to school. It's already happened. He walked. Present simple is a repeated action or state of being. So that means it's happening um, currently and it's being repeated. Ken walks to school every day. Ken is smart. That is being repeated because he's doing it every day. Ken is smart every day, so it's being repeated. Future simple verb tense, ah, sorry, is an action or state of being that will happen. So Ken will walk to school tomorrow. It's going to happen in the future. Progressive verb tense, past, an ongoing action occurred in the past. So the action was, if you're talking about this right now, the action has already happened but it's an ongoing action. So I was talking to Benjamin. Benjamin was talking to me. The students were talking to Benjamin. Present progressive, an ongoing action is occurring right now. I am talking to Benjamin. Benjamin is talking to me. The students are talking to Benjamin. Future progressive, an ongoing action will occur in the future, so it's going to happen. I will be talking to Benjamin. Benjamin will be talking to me. The students will be talking to Benjamin. Okay, then we have perfect verb tenses. Past perfect, an action occurred before another event in the past. Julie had traveled to hundreds of countries before she moved to Spain. So she's already moved to Spain. That's also happened in the past, but even before that, she had traveled to hundreds of countries before she moved there. Present perfect, an action occurred at an unspecified time in the past. Julie has traveled to hundreds of countries looking for a place to live. So she currently has already traveled. So even though you're talking in the present, she's already done it. And then in uh, future perfect, an action will occur before another event in the future. Julie will have traveled to hundreds of countries before the end of the year. Whew. Okay, that was a lot. So don't, if you feel confused, that's okay, because this is a lot of information. And at this point in your writing, you guys are using the correct verb tenses for the most part. Just always, always make sure that you reread and make sure that you're using the what sounds right. If you're talking about the past, you're not going to say, um, I will be talking to him. If you're talking about something that's already happened. Okay. So just always reread and um, you can always Google too. Remember, Google is your friend. Use it to help you make sure you have that good grammar. Okay, and then we also have modal verbs. And these verbs are, um, they kind of tell you like a necessity or um, a possibility. So it could tell you, it could be an ability to do something, permission, advice, obligation, or a possibility. So these um, examples, we have can and could. David can speak three languages. So 
um, it's a, his ability to speak three languages. He can. He could speak fluent French when he was five. That's a modal verb, can and could. Then we have can, could, and may. Can I sit in that chair, please? Could I open the window? May I borrow your dictionary? Um, should, you should visit your dentist at least twice a year. You should try to lose weight. None of you should. Hmm. So that's um, giving advice. Obligation, must, or uh, have to. I must memorize all of these rules about tenses. You have to take off your shoes before you get into the mosque. Or a possibility, might, may, could, or can. Shh, Opie, be quiet with that, please. Opie's ready to play. You can hear it squeaking. It looks nice, but it might be very expensive. Oh, uh, I can't read this. Go away. Richard may be coming to see us tomorrow. So, um, again, these rules are not rules that we think of all the time. I mean, because you kind of do them naturally without thinking about, oh, I'm using a modal verb right now. So just keep writing and make sure it sounds like it makes sense. If it doesn't, then you need then you need to think about these things and, okay, did I use the right modal verb in this sentence, okay? And then the last one we're gonna do today is adjectives. Adjectives are words that describe a noun. So um, tall, short, nice, big, hot, funny, expensive, interesting. So all of those are words that describe a noun. My refrigerator is tall. Miss Moore is short. My dog is big. It is hot outside. Okay, those are just regular old adjectives. But then we also have comparative adjectives which compare. Um, my fridge is taller than my oven. My um, pug is shorter than my big dog. Uh, it is hotter today than it was yesterday. It's comparing two different things, okay? Then we also have superlative adjectives, which tell like the, um, the tallest, the shortest, the nicest, the biggest. Those adjectives tell us which one is the, the ist. Okay, and then we have irregular adjectives like good, bad, many, much, far. So instead of adding er or est to the adjective, the whole word changes. So if something is good, um, my cookies were good, well, uh, the comparative adjective would be uh, Miss Allen's cookies were better, but Miss Rector's cookies were the best. Okay, so instead of just adding er or est, the whole word's going to change. Okay, and we're going to stop there at um, adjectives, and we'll do some more parts of speech tomorrow. Okay, all right, guys, um, I'm going to post some sorts on Seesaw for you to practice some of these parts of speech, because I know um, some of this is definitely probably sounding new, because it's been so long since we've talked about it. Um, also, a lot of times, I know you guys remember noun, adjective, verb, but sometimes we don't get into all this as often. So I'm going to put some stuff on Seesaw that you can do to practice, okay? And tomorrow we will continue with the rest of the parts of speech. All right, guys. See ya.